Section 1.6, Mathematical Treatment of Measurement Results. Here we're looking at using conversion factors. So we're going to use conversion factors to change from one unit to another unit. So as a reminder, make sure the units you don't need are getting canceled out. If you understand conversion factors, you should be able to do almost all of the calculations in this class. Gen Chem 1 and Gen Chem 2 really just rely very heavily on algebra skills and being able to use conversion factors. So let's quickly jump right into a knowledge check question. What is the mass in kilograms of a man weighing 192.5 pounds? And hint, one pound equals 453.6 grams. All right, the correct answer here is 87.32. Notice that I asked for the mass in kilograms. So first, you would want to convert convert from pounds to grams. So that would be 192.5 pounds. And I'm going to convert that to grams using this conversion factor. And I write pounds on the bottom because I want pounds to cancel. Now I would need to convert from grams to kilograms. So I would want to write a conversion factor. So that would be one kilogram equals 10 to the third grams. So I would write 10 to the third grams on bottom and one kilogram up top. And when you work this math out, you should get B, 87.32 kilograms. All right, let's have you try one more question. What is the height in millimeters of an object that is six feet, 11.50 inches tall? All right, correct answer here is D, 2,121. So here, first, you'd want to convert this to inches. So six feet should be equal to 72 inches. So we have a total of 83.50 inches. That's the height of this object convert from inches to centimeters using this conversion factor, then you needed to convert from centimeters to millimeters. And your answer here is D, 2,121 millimeters. All right, let's briefly talk about temperature units. So there are three temperature scales, Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. So we are most commonly going to use Celsius. We will also use Kelvin. Celsius and Kelvin are very useful in that they are based upon water. Well, Celsius is based upon water. And what's useful about Celsius and Kelvin is that a degree of each of them uh, is the same. So the de uh, one degree Celsius has the same magnitude as one degree Kelvin. So the converting between the two is very easy. Fahrenheit is a more challenging scale. Fahrenheit's kind of got its own thing going on. It's very unlikely you will see Fahrenheit much in this course. Now the Celsius scale, again, is based on water. The freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. Now the Kelvin scale is what's considered the absolute scale. So the lowest possible temperature is zero Kelvin, which is absolute zero. Now, as I mentioned, converting between Celsius and Kelvin, it's really easy and really straightforward. Now this will be on the reference sheet, but uh, it is Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273.15. So if you are trying to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, you take your degree Celsius and you add 273.15. If you're going in the reverse direction, if I'm trying to convert from Kelvin to Celsius, I would subtract 273.15. Now, as I mentioned, what's very useful about the Celsius and Kelvin scale is that one degree Celsius equals one degree Kelvin. So all you have to do is add or subtract 273.15 to go from one to the other. That's it. It's really straightforward. All right, so let's look at a few quick examples. What is 28 degrees in Celsius in Kelvin? So if I'm trying to go from Celsius to Kelvin, I would add 273.15. And this would give me the answer 301.15 Kelvin. If I'm doing the reverse, let's say I asked you what is 215 Kelvin in Celsius, I would subtract. So I would take 215 minus 273.15, and this gives negative 58.15 degrees Celsius. Here is a quick knowledge check question for you. Normal body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. What is this in Kelvin?
All right, the correct answer here is D, 310 Kelvin. So you would take 37 degrees Celsius and you would add 273.15 and you get 310 Kelvin or 310.15 Kelvin. All right, quickly, let's talk about the Fahrenheit scale. So we're all familiar with this. It's very common in the United States. Now the freezing point of water in Fahrenheit is 32 degrees. The boiling point is 212 degrees. Now what's frustrating about Fahrenheit and the reason we are barely unlikely to use it is, well, one, it's not based upon water. And two, is that Fahrenheit and Celsius, the degrees have different magnitudes. There are 180 degrees between freezing and boiling in Fahrenheit, but only 100 degrees in Celsius. So a degree Celsius is slightly larger than a degree Celsius, or we could say the size of a degree on the Fahrenheit scale is smaller than on the Celsius scale. They do not have the same magnitude, so it's a little more difficult to convert between the two. And so this is how you convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit, and then uh, from or from uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius, it's the reverse process. Now, if I ask you a question about a Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion on the exam, uh, the this equation right here will be on the reference sheet. You do not need to memorize this. You would just use this equation. So again, as I mentioned here, if you look at these two scales, a degree Fahrenheit is smaller than a degree Celsius, which is why this conversion is a little more challenging. So let's say I asked what is 28 degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit. So the temp in Fahrenheit equals 1.8 over 1 times temp in Celsius plus 32. So I take 28 degrees Celsius and I multiply it by 1.8, which gives me 50.4. Then I add 32 and this gives 82. So 28 degrees Celsius is approximately 82 degrees Fahrenheit. If I'm doing the reverse, converting from degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius, I first subtract and then I multiply. So I would take 215 degrees Fahrenheit minus 32, which gives me 183. Then I would multiply by 1 over 1 1.8. So essentially divide by 1.8. This gives 102 degrees Celsius. So 215 degrees Fahrenheit equals 102 degrees Celsius. Again, if problems like these are on the exam, do not worry, these formulas will be on the reference sheets. All right, so here's a quick knowledge check question for you. Convert 30 degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. All right, correct answer here is B, 86.0 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so here is a brief temperature conversion summary. So going from Celsius to Fahrenheit, you would use this conversion. Doing the reverse, going from Fahrenheit to Celsius, use this conversion, but again, you will very rarely, if ever, see these in this course, besides possibly the first unit. What you definitely want to know, again, these will be on the reference sheet, but it is very helpful to know these and to memorize these. Going from Celsius to Kelvin, you add 273.15. Going from Kelvin to Celsius, you subtract 273.15. And here are just a few important temperatures I want to mention. The most important one to know would be water melting and water boiling. Water melts at 0 degrees Celsius and it boils at 100 degrees Celsius. All right, that concludes chapter one. I will see you in the next set of videos when we start diving into chapter two.